Okay, thanks very much. Uh, we're going to go back up to the Athabasca Basin, so from South America to uh, quite north in northern Saskatchewan in Canada. Uh, Dennis and Mines, next 10 minutes on uranium development uh, and exploration. Um, really a, a bit of a different story than some of the stories you've heard earlier. Uh, we are talking about an advanced project that's in the permitting process and moving towards actually developing this asset and producing uranium in the mid-2020s. Just one quick slide, though, to start on the market. Um, you know, Denison is the manager of Uranium Participation Corp. It's the world's uh, largest publicly traded uranium physical stockpiling company, and so we do pay a lot of attention uh, to the uranium market. And I won't go over all of these themes, but I do want to tell everyone that you should not lose faith in the uranium story. I know many of you have probably been in the uranium space the last several years, and it seems like this commodity is a little bit on the ropes, um, you know, unloved, a uh, commodity that people aren't really paying attention to today. Uh, but, but really underneath uh, what's happening with the spot price, there are a number of very positive things happening, and so you should not lose faith. Uh, number one, and the thing I just want to touch on here, is really the cyclicality of our commodity. Uh, we have seen many long-term contracts coming to an end, and we do see utility buyers positioning for a new phase of purchasing. Uh, and it really will be that purchasing that drives the spot price. It is a small market uh, for uranium. If you do not have buyers, it's unlikely that you're gonna see the price moving. We do need price discovery. And so those utilities coming back into the market is really what will drive the turnaround. Right now, uh, there's been a fair amount of paralysis amongst those utilities driven on the trade tensions in the United States. So we do expect as that trade, uh, those trade concerns around the Nuclear Fuel Working Group and this former Section 232 petition, as that risk comes off the table, we do think the table is set for the utility buyers to come back. And the market they'll come back to is a market that has seen supply curtailment and demand growth. Uh, those are both things that are going to be positive for the uranium price. In terms of Denison, I did mention a slightly different company than some of the others that have been up here and, and will follow us. Uh, we do have a diversified but uh, Athabasca-centric asset base. Uh, we have a uh, flagship asset and our 90% interest in the Wheeler River project. Again, this is a development stage project. Uh, it is the largest undeveloped uranium deposit or project in the eastern Athabasca Basin. I highlight the eastern Athabasca Basin because that's home to infrastructure, and that's an important part of our story. Uh, one of our other assets here uh, is a 22.5% interest in the McLean Lake uranium mill. So that's part of that infrastructure story. Uh, this is a real mill. It's built. It exists. It's operating. It's licensed. It has excess license capacity, an important part of our story for sure. Uh, you round out our story with interest in a variety of other projects and deposits in the Athabasca Basin. Uh, we don't get much love for some of these assets right now, but there are unmined deposits at McLean, Midwest, and Waterbury that no doubt add leverage to our story. We finish it up with two other pieces, exploration, very large project portfolio in, in the eastern Athabasca, and a great team uh, of explorers that have found uh, several deposits over the last uh, you know, decade for Denison. Uh, but also some cash flow. Managing UPC, uh, we do generate cash flow, and we do have a closed mines business as well uh, where we're generating cash flow. Really unique feature for a, for a developer. So uh, I won't, won't spend too much on the map here, and you're certainly welcome to come by our booth to look at the, the exact location of our projects, but I do want to drive us down to the Wheeler River project, just located between the MacArthur River Mine and the Key Lake Mill, and spend the bulk of the time here talking about our project. I mentioned it's the largest undeveloped uh, uranium project in the eastern Athabasca Basin. Uh, it has two, two high-grade deposits, and, and they're different deposits, and they have different mining methods. And they're slightly different stories, but together come together as one very unique project. The first is our high-grade Phoenix deposit. So this, this deposit averages over 19% grade, highest grade undeveloped uranium deposit in the world. And we've now paired it up with the world's lowest cost mining method for uranium, which is in situ recovery. And the results are very powerful. You can see from this slide uh, that we have operating costs estimated at $3.33 per pound US 
from Phoenix. No doubt that's going to be one of the most competitive in the world. Now if we move over to the Griffin deposit, about three kilometers away on the property, different geological setting, it's amenable to conventional underground mining. It means that we're using a shaft to access that ore body, and so our costs are a little bit different. We've got great operating costs there, very competitive uh, in that $12 US per pound range, and our all-in costs there slightly higher because we do have that capital to bear from the underground mining approach. Altogether, over 100 million pounds in probable reserves, 14-year mine life, and it all gets started with around $325 million Canadian in upfront capex. So if we just orient those two deposits on the cost curve, and what we're showing here is a sample of uranium producing assets or development assets on an all-in cost per pound basis. So on, on, the, on the vertical axis, that's pounds uh, or dollars per pound all-in cost. That includes initial capex, sustaining capex, and opex. It's a fully loaded cost. And on the horizontal, we're showing these different projects. We've color-coded them by jurisdiction, and we've labeled the mining methods. And a couple of key things you're gonna see from this. The bottom of the cost curve, so those are the lowest cost projects. Those are the best in the space. They're dominated by ISR, in-situ recovery mining. Most of them are in Kazakhstan but for our Phoenix deposit, which really ranks up there with the lowest cost assets in the world for uranium, with an all-in cost fully loaded under $9 US per pound. That means today, with a spot price of around $25 US, we've already got a very healthy margin. And that's why this asset is moving forward, and we've initiated the permitting process, and we're aggressively moving forward towards development. Now our Griffin asset is also very competitive. You'll see that it ranks really well with the underground mines in the space. It's very comparable to Cigar Lake, uh, just, just slightly higher cost than MacArthur River. We can be competitive here because we're using the existing infrastructure. And so really, it ends up being, for us, a bit of a one-two punch of deposits in one project. We'd start with our Phoenix uh, deposit, makes money today. We can justify moving it forward as a first phase with minimal capex. We use that cash flow from Phoenix to build the Griffin deposit. We're expecting the market to have a greater demand for uranium in that sort of 2030 timeline. And so those extra pounds from Griffin make a lot of sense to bring into the market then whereas the Phoenix pounds are pounds that we can make money on today. And so just to quickly orient where we're situated here in our timeline, again, we're focused on the environmental assessment and permitting process and our feasibility study for Phoenix right now. And we're looking at a production or construction timeline, starting that in the 2022 range with our first production coming from Phoenix in the 2025 range. After that, we add on that second stage with Griffin and really add length, life, length to the life of this and scale in terms of production. The last thing I want to touch on here is slide on economics. It's a busy slide, but it's important because at the end of the day, you have to look at the valuation of these companies. We've done something very, very unique in our economic models. And of course, you, you'll see many economic models here. Uh, for Phoenix, well, let me, let me step back. We've taken a different approach for the two different deposits in our, in our price assumptions. And it's very much driven by our view of the market and our view of how we will advance these projects. If we want Phoenix to move forward today, we have to assess it at a price point that's similar to where we're at today. Of course, we believe the uranium price will go much higher, but can I justify spending money on it today? And so for Phoenix, we've actually used a price deck that's based on UXC's spot price forecast, and it starts at $29 a pound US in our first year of selling. Okay, it doesn't rely on $50 or $60 uranium price. It starts around $29 US. Griffin, we see bringing on as that second stage, and so we have assumed that we would sell those pounds into a better market on a contract basis at $50. That's our base case. And when you look at the base case and you compare it to where we were on our previous economic study, you'll see that this new mining method and new approach for the project has added almost 200% to the NPV. Okay, our, our share price did not go up 200% on this news, uh, but there is that potential and, and really we're very optimistic about bringing ISR mining to the Athabasca and truly being able to mine and sell these pounds in this uranium market. 
Anyways, with that, uh, we do have a booth here and our team is, is at the conference. We're booth 418, so we definitely would love for folks to come out for some additional information. Thanks very much.